Welcome back, explorers. Brian here, your guide for another adventure around the world. Before the U.S. Civil War, rivers were considered the primary artery in the lifeblood of southern states. Railroads allowed the factory-based economy to grow in the north. The South's reliance on rivers to transport crops meant that waterways remained critical for farmers. Dependence on rivers was one of the reasons the Union ultimately defeated the Confederacy. General Grant's strategy to control the South's waterways was a deciding factor. The Southern Army was unable to use them to move troops or the supplies they needed to wage war. After their defeat, southern states remained well behind the rest of the U.S. in virtually every way, including economic prosperity and quality of life. Until the 1930s. To help the United States break out of the Great Depression, the New Deal, a series of reforms and programs to kickstart the American economy, put millions to work. Among the programs were the Civilian Conservation Corps, which built numerous public works and structures, and the Federal Housing Administration, created to regulate mortgages and housing conditions. To Southerners, arguably the most important New Deal program was the Tennessee Valley Authority. It provided jobs throughout the Southeast, controlled flooding, stabilized water transportation, and generated electrical power throughout the region. Even today, the TVA has expanded to include nuclear power and fossil fuel burning stations. It remains one of the largest providers of electrical power in the country. Southern states are flush with natural resources for agriculture, mining, logging, and fishing. But it wasn't until the introduction of electrical power that the South's economy began to catch up with the rest of the country again. This illustrates how important reliable energy is to economic growth and stability in an electrified world. On that note, let's spend some time today on these objectives. Differentiate between renewable and non-renewable resources. Explain how natural resources play a role in energy production. And explain why different places around the world rely on different sources of energy. Just as each location features unique climate conditions, they also offer their own combination of natural resources that are essential to their economic development and growth. Logging is essential to Oregon and Washington. Wyoming produces 40% of the coal mined in the U.S., and oil is largely responsible for the economic success of Texas. Natural resources like these are grouped into two categories, renewable and non-renewable. Renewable resources are those that can be regenerated and used over and over. They include forces of nature such as wind, waves, and tides, as well as natural materials that are replenished quickly, like soil, trees, crops, and animals. Can you think of a renewable resource not on our list? Pause the video and jot a response to number one in your lesson guide. Maybe you said that solar energy or sunshine is a renewable resource. Great job! Non-renewable resources, on the other hand, are those that can be used only once or ones that would take a vast amount of time to be recreated. Fossil fuels such as coal, crude oil, and natural gas are non-renewable resources that one day we will likely run out of and be unable to produce. Other non-renewable resources include metals we extract from the earth. Let's try this again. Name another non-renewable resource not in our list. Pause the video again and answer number two. Maybe you said that minerals like salt and gemstones are non-renewable resources. Many of our natural resources, both renewable and non-renewable, are used to create energy. Much in the same way that our bodies use food as fuel, our natural resources are used to create electrical energy. The world is currently undergoing a transition to using renewable resources to create energy. It is important to the future of humanity that we lessen our dependence on non-renewable resources, specifically fossil fuels, as well as sources that cause significant carbon output into the atmosphere. Both our nation and the rest of the world are slowly adapting. 
Each region around the world relies on a different mix of energy sources based on local resources. Harnessing the ocean's tides to create electricity is a new idea that could work well in California or Japan, but not so great in Kansas. Another fast-growing energy producer is wind. Just like the tidal turbines we saw, wind farms provide mechanical power as turbines turn electric generators to create power. These are especially popular in windy areas such as the American Midwest and Europe. Solar power has also grown in recent years. By harnessing the sun's rays and converting the heat to electrical power, cheap, efficient energy is created. Based on your knowledge of the U.S., where would you expect the most solar energy to be produced? Why there? Respond in your lesson guide. Although Florida is known as the Sunshine State, California and Arizona are the top two solar producers. Hydroelectric power from dams continues to be a source of energy, especially in the southeast and western regions of the U.S., but its overall impact has declined. This is likely because the construction and maintenance of huge dams, like the Hoover Dam in Nevada, is expensive. Still, as we attempt to rely less on fossil fuels and more on renewable energy sources, hydroelectric power is in our tool belt and could make a resurgence in the future. While geothermal stations and biomass burning sites also create some electrical power both in our country and others, the vast bulk of energy created by the U.S. still comes from fossil fuels. In fact, about 60% of all electrical power is generated from burning coal, natural gas, and petroleum to produce electricity. Coal-burning sites generate about 20% of the nation's electricity, but that has lessened over the last two decades. Look at this 1850 map showing sources of coal and lumber. Which states do you think make up the coal belt in the United States? Pause the video and examine the map before answering number 4 in your lesson guide. As expected, the primary sites for coal-powered plants include states from Pennsylvania westward to Illinois. Since the 1850s, Texas has also emerged as a source of coal and coal energy production. Now let's think about why many of the coal-fueled power plants are in these states. It's definitely possible to build one in any of the 50 states, right? Why would it be better to build them closer to where the coal can be mined? Respond to the last question in the lesson guide. That's right, the coal has to be transported from where it is mined to where it is converted to energy, and transporting it costs money and resources. Better to keep close. In the U.S., a whopping 40% of our electrical power is generated by burning natural gas. Just as dams are built on rivers, sites for converting natural gas to electricity overlap in areas on this map that show where natural gas is plentiful in our nation. One final source of electrical power is nuclear energy. While nuclear power is renewable in theory, the materials that we know how to split to create heat, mainly uranium, are non-renewable. The difficult disposal of radioactive waste and the threat of a nuclear meltdown make this a controversial choice for many nations, even within the U.S., which is the world's leading producer of electricity generated from nuclear power. Energy is very much a resource, and all electrical energy is produced from natural resources. Those natural resources are split into two groups, renewable, and non-renewable. As we move forward in our study of geography, it will be important to consider the combination of natural resources that can be found in the places we visit and how they are used to create energy and fuel the local economy. What natural resources can be found near your home? Are they renewable or non-renewable? Can we access them cleanly or does it take a toll on the environment? These are just a few questions you can ask to help make the world around you come alive. Remember to ask questions, be curious, and until next time, keep exploring. Hey, hey.